Lonely Globe, episode 17 with the one and only Clout Cider. Welcome, bro. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Yeah, long time listener, first time caller. You know. Oh, no, man. Wouldn't miss this for the world. Even if Adam22 from No Jumper was like, yo, Clout Cider, get on. I'd be like, nah, bro. Not even if you, if you let me fuck your wife, bro. Nah, I'm not gonna it, <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> anyway. Oh, man. Nah, man, you've been good. Yeah, I've been doing good. I, like the last time I saw you was at the Birmingham gig, right? Oh like, shit, yeah. That was a it throwback. Was, it was a yeah. uh, it was a good gig. That was. It went nah. really well. Thank you, thank you so much. Like I I, I enjoyed it. I was like ill as shit. But, but, yeah, but, tell like, me about yeah. it. Yeah. I think yeah. everyone's coming down with it at the minute. I said to you, just I got this chest infection, so that's yeah. right in the off. Nah, so, fair. It's one of them though, man. <laughs> you know, I just got to get on with it. We I remember part from that show, you know. Um, with your set, the <laughs> I always remember the one point you threw the ball into this into the crowd. Oh yeah, getting one moshing man, and no <laughs> one knew what to do at first. Like this, this is the way I saw it. I don't know how you saw it from where you were. Oh yeah, but the way I saw it, I was on the stairs in uh, Sunflower Lounge, obviously mm. looking down. You threw the ball and no one knew what to do until you just got that like, one guy just throw himself and everyone started going. <laughs> it just went like it just worked as it planned as you planned it to, to be fair. That's funny as hell. Like when that when that shit goes off at shows, I usually can't see what's happening. Well it depends on the stage really. I did it in like I did the ball thing in Kettering once and it was in like a pub floor room and yeah. you could see everything, but it was like honestly, I've never been so scared playing on well i wasn't the stage it was on the floor but i've never been so scared during the ball game as i was during that <laughs> just to see the outcome you don't know what the outcome yeah. is gonna be. it's either yeah. it works or it doesn't work yeah man, but like, it works like it does work because it gets people fucking going yeah. personally yeah like if anyone doesn't know what i do at gigs is not i throw a ball into a crowd during incisions which is like one of the more brutal songs i made and yeah. like, whoever gets the ball they get a fiver or a piece of merch when i get merch printed eventually <laughs> yeah it was a fiver for now. I think it was ten tenner last gig. I think or... it was a tenner. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, I think you, were, you said a fiver, and then you boosted up and you went, nah, I'll do a tenner, yeah. if I can remember. Get think, people, yeah. People, yeah. Yeah, just uh, think about it, get a gig, and you get ten quid just to mosh the fuck out of someone. Exactly. No, you get it, bro. It's like, it, it covers the cost of entry. It's like, it, it's uh, make, yeah, it makes exactly. business sense. I didn't think of it in that way. Yeah. Or a pint <laughs> at the bar. Exactly. Don't know how much it... Yeah, pints are fucking insane now, bro. Like, I moved down to Bristol not too long ago, and I went to like, this big club, and it was like ten a pint. And I was like, nah, I'm I'm leaving, bro. What down yeah. Bristol? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like I forgot where I went to now, but it was like it was um, a pretty big club. Yeah, I think it's all going up again soon as well. Like all the uh, prices with like with beer and alcohol and stuff. And I was just like, yeah. I, it, oh. I just think I count those lucky that don't drink. No, because I'm saving a shit ton. Yeah, speaking, and then people, us. <laughs> speaking of people who don't drink, like I think the first time I met you, I was still straight edge. Like, I was like completely sober. Like for those who don't know, straight edge is like a, a claim you make to live your life in sobriety. But obviously, I didn't really respect the claim too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back on the drink and that. But yeah, yeah, I, I do like to have a drink mm. sensibly. Sensibly, exactly. Via the podcast, sensibly. Yeah. You've got to abide by Ofcom rules and regulations and that. Yeah, pretty well. much. <laughs> <laughs> but fucking, it was a good gig, man. Marshall did really well DJing because obviously I did the last podcast with Marshall. Yeah, yeah, it was a good podcast, bro. Yeah. The thing about Marshall is the first time I ever met him was at the previous Birmingham show because what happened was my DJ dropped out and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, what am I going to do? I can't get a new DJ. And I see him post on the story like, I'm offering DJ services. I'm like, hey, can you come down tomorrow? And he's like, yeah. Um, Which show was this one then? That was um, L- Lawless and Rossi's was- uh, debut EP, EP drop. Yes, he was. He was there. Yes, I remember. Yeah. I remember now. God, that was... That, that was how long ago was that? Ah, that was fucking... Was that August 2023? Something like that. I think it was. So it's a, It was around that, that time. Yeah. Because yeah. that was the first time I met uh, Lawless and uh, Rossi. And you. It was the yeah. first time we met. God, that was long ago, that was. Yeah, I mean... Was, and then the shows one, continue. Yeah, it's one of my favourite shows I've ever done, probably, in that one. That was a good turnout. That yeah. was really good. Yeah, man. That was actually, like... I think, because I didn't know anyone either, and I only just, like, started speaking to uh, Lawless for, like, the last two days, I think it was. Um, 
because it's when I just started the podcast and I wanted to do an interview with him and he was like, come down to the show. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get you a ticket. I was like, oh, okay, buzzing. Like, uh, yeah, I'll stop by. Um, and it was like during that time, I didn't realize like, fuck me, this is this is where I need to kind of like set it off a bit, like going to these live, like live uh, places and listen to all these different artists. And it, you don't realize where it takes you along the way. Like we wouldn't have met if I wouldn't have done that. No, nah, for sure. And same yeah. with Lawless and Rossi and, you know, like Marshall and Pears and, it's mate, it's crazy, man. It's cool. I really yeah. do enjoy it. But we needed another show like that. Yeah, yeah for sure. Everyone like uh, small shows. Everyone's gonna be really friendly. Everyone's there for the same reason, you know. It's like, yeah, you, yeah. you all like the same music. You're all there to to vibe, have a good time. And like, even if it does get a bit violent, it's all love, bro. No one's doing actually trying to hurt anyone. Yeah, pretty much. Did, yeah. did you did you do a show recently? Did you do, you've done another show recently, haven't you? And that's just the Birmingham one, I don't think. Um, I got I got. Got a few plans. Got one coming up in June. Dead Wax, Birmingham again. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's gonna be cool. Uh, yeah. Potentially late May as well, Birmingham again. Like, uh, basically, Birmingham can't get rid of me. I just keep coming back. Birmingham's ace. Yeah. No, I grew up on those ends. Like, I grew up in Coventry mainly, mm. and like, there was never anything going in Coventry like music-wise because I always wanted to make like heavier and heavier tunes and like. Uh, when, when people want to get me in bands, they're like, oh, bro, can you do this singing part? I'm like, no, nah, I just want to scream. I just want to scream, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I get that, to be fair. Yeah, and then, like, Birmingham, that was, like, the only place, like, where you have, like, heavy music that was local to me. So, yeah. I think people are trying to jump on... Um, not actually, I'm not even going to say jump on a scene. I think they're trying to recreate the scene and try and get it bumping a lot more. Like, yeah. I know um, Rossi and Lawless are really working hard to, like, push the emo scene again. Um, which personally, I think they'll do really well with the will. Because um, I don't, you don't hear about it in Birmingham. In all honesty, um, but do you know what I find as well? Do you know, like round by Birmingham, I, you don't hear many trap metal artists. Like, apart from no. yourself, you don't. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, it, there's a apart, lot of like, apart from Scarlord, he's from Wolverhampton, but yeah, he's, he's a bit mainstream. He's mainstream now. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I know. And he, yeah, he's not even. He just makes like he makes stuff he likes now, like funk shit and. Stuff like that. Yeah, um, on, uh, it was a it was a big like inspiration early on, like seeing Scarlet like scream over beats and like, oh, that's something you can do. That's sick. You know? Yeah. Oh god, I wish I could do it. I really do. Mm. I just can't. Well, I can't at the minute anyway. But yeah, when I was like getting into uh, the whole trap metal rage core thing, there were a lot of like kids on SoundCloud who would just like whisper into the mic and then distorted heavily, and then like, yeah, it's I don't know, just however you want to express yourself is valid, you know. But, like, yeah. Yeah. Is that where it all started for you, trap metal scene? Or was it anything before that? Shit before that, well, I was like heavy music. Like my dad was in a band in Poland in like 1998 called Calder. And they were a hard ass shit, bro. I love that band, hard as nails. Like for a random band in the middle of fucking nowhere in Poland, bro. Have you great. still got some of the stuff? Still yeah, yeah, yeah. I uploaded it to a channel at one point. It's just like, if you type into YouTube, Calder 1998 demo, it's, it's on there. And like, dude, it's honestly, it's like so hard. <laughs> No way, that is actually quite cool. Yeah, so uh, they never went anywhere, never did anything big. It's like no one, no one knows about them apart from me. I, I still like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he introduced me to a lot of like heavier music, and then like when I went to secondary school, I like started getting into like new metal and like nineties hip hop, like Bone Thugs and like N.W.A. and I don't know Free Six Mafia a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then like so yeah, I just. And but like for a while, I tried to make more heavy music. So I, there, again, there was no one in Coventry that really wanted to make the heavy shit I did. And I was kind of like pissed off with my school and everything. And I was in a Counter-Strike group full of people who made music and they all went to sort of the same school together. And I was like, nah, fuck my school, I'm going to yours. So I decided to go to like a school two towns away just because like they had a better, I don't know, better vibe to them, better, better people to. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I, could, I wish I could have done that, fuck me. Yeah. I don't know. It was like I, I I rate that decision. Like even though it was a, I don't know. It's probably like worse learning environment, and it's probably not good for me in the long run. I've I've I had a great time. I made a lot of music. I used I, to make like. I, I say I don't base everything on education, though. I think no, it's whatever you want to do with your life. Um, and like the education system really bring you up to say you've got to do good education. Don't get me wrong. You need your maths, your English, all that sort of stuff. You get I get that. Mm. But it's not the all end or like the be all and end or. It's wherever, no, whatever route you want to take at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. 
But yeah, in the school I ended up going to, there was just like, for some reason, a fuck ton of rappers and bands and producers. And I was like, oh shit. And that's when I started making like really crappy emo rap and uploading it to SoundCloud. I don't class it as crappy emo rap though. Like it's a creative, it's a creative flow. Now this is before Clout Side. This is like, oh, uh, okay. What, I, was, I what to, was it before? What was I your name go, before? I used to go in the name Crew of a K because like in Polish, like the, it's pronounced Krew, which means blood. But yeah. in English you read it, it's like Crew, but like it's like a double meaning. Ah, right? okay. <laughs> yeah, I removed most of this shit. I think you might be able to find someone on band, band camp. And Have you if, got, um, so are you Polish then? Are you part Polish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I moved here when I was like five in my family. And, so is your mum Polish as well? Yeah, and both my parents are Polish. Oh, no. No way, that's cool. I didn't oh, know. I never knew. Oh, that. no. Fuck you. Get this no. poll off the podcast. <laughs> oh, good. The way you come out there, actually. <laughs> no, I never, I never knew that. That's crazy. Like, yeah, that's, that's why I had the Polish flag up during the uh, Birmingham show. Yeah, I thought that. I was a bit like, <laughs> what's, that? what's that for? And then now you've said it, that makes fucking sense. Yeah, I, I never just... knew that. I, I've never, <laughs> well, I don't know why I didn't ask, though. But then again, I, I, I wouldn't have. Yeah, it's, it's not a question you think of asking, you know, like, oh, are you Polish? Just right, exactly, Polish. I wouldn't look at you and go, are you Polish? Because you, yeah, you, you don't look Polish, in my opinion. But then again, who looks Polish? I don't know. I uh, so look Polish, you got to have, like, a shaved head. Uh, probably, like, way more muscular than me. you got to have, like, n- no facial hair, exactly. you got to be, like, a proper skinhead-looking bloke. And... I didn't want to be stereotypical, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, I've never, that's actually cool, though. I never knew that. Yeah, I got like you know, on my EP VHS. There's a song called Zwoto, which is half of it's in Polish, and I had like a few more songs in Polish I was going to drop, but I never got around to it. Is that why uh, Graveyard uh, Drillings has the Polish yeah. text at the start, and then it's the original UK uh, British text or UK text, whatever? It is. To be fair, that's Russian. But oh, is that yeah. Russian? Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a Polish artist on it, uh, Tishina, who I, I met online because he was making like electronic industrial. Uh, dark shit and like he was doing it all in ethos studio with any instruments and i was like damn this shit's really cool and inspiring so i just hit him up and we've just been like talking since and oh mad yeah so have you connected with any polish artists then like that within your niche or yeah i mean there was a, a few people i spoke to recently like but maybe recently bro time's flying like probably six months back but yeah yeah there have been like polish drill artists and like emo rap artists i've been wanting to work with i've been contacting like some of my favorite like polish music that I, inspires me is probably like Noskov, um watch me die slowly he's pretty much like the polish dripping so pretty and it's yeah. like yeah he's he's called that shit like i, I like his... i like hearing like all the different cultures experiment into music the way and like you know what i mean like it's it's weird like because i don't understand it like i'm trying to think who i listen to He's from, I think he's from Belgium. A young, new young Hearn is. Nah, I'm, actually, maybe I've heard the name, or maybe you've mentioned them. Young, I think it's Young Hearn. I listen to him a lot, and he, I'm sure he's German. I'm sure he is. Might be wrong, but um, I listen to him all the time. Don't understand the fucking lyrics. He just mm. sounds cool. He sounds cool. Like <laughs> his music's actually pretty decent. Um, I'm trying to think of who else I listen to. I don't. Nah, it's like with Japanese drill, for example. Like I like this artist called Ralph. And like, he just like raps in a really deep voice. I have no idea what he's saying, but it sounds tough. It so just sounds like, cool, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. it it's weird right. when you think... I remember... I always remember this. Like, I went to Amsterdam for the first time. And um, it was a weird, weird, weird like uh, story, really, because we, like, we'd finished through the day. Me and all my mates like went back to the hotel, went to bed. And um, before that, I was sat in the bar with my mate. And then we got back to the hotel and about 10 minutes later, I had a text. I'd just gone into bed. Uh, 10 minutes later, I had a text off mate going, what are you, are you, are you asleep? I messaged back, I, I, bro, I'm, to be fair, I'm wide awake. Yeah. And he's like, should we just go to a club? Like me and you, I was like, yeah, you know what, fuck it. We're, we're in Amsterdam, fuck it. It was about half one at this point. And um, left all the lads at the hotel asleep. So me and my mate Rob went off, went to this nightclub. Don't know where the fuck it was. Got any, I don't know where it was in Amsterdam. Um, uh, we had to pay to get in. And then the weird part about it was to pay for your drinks, you had to put money on a card, on a credit card type of thing they give you. So you can't just go to the bar and pay by cash. It's a way of you put like 20 euros on a card. And uh, once that's up, you keep having to come back and top up your card. So oh, yeah. I thought, oh, put 20, I think I put about 30 euros in it. I thought 30 euros, I should be all right. 
bro, the way they get you in there for drinks, I was like buying a drink. It was like five euros something. So then you had like two euros spare or three euros on that card spare. You couldn't even use. So it's a way of like, oh, you've got to put more money on it then. So it was a bit, sh- bit shit really. But we got in this place and it was just like, you know, just all normal type mainstream music. And then all the lights went off. I was just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, mate, a bunch of people just rushed the stage. Loads of like Dutch artists. Didn't know a fucking word they said. Everyone's going nuts. Me and my mate yeah. Rob had just stood in the middle of this fucking club like, what the fuck am I saying? <laughs> it's like, just didn't know how to experience it. But he was some like mainstream artist. He was quite big. I, I don't know who he was. Wouldn't even know what he looks like now. That's dope as shit, man. It was such a weird experience. And I was like, yeah. I didn't expect to experience that. I had that in Berlin, you know. I went there with my girlfriend like last year. And one night we were like, let's just go out. So we're just looking for clubs on Google Maps, just trying to find something good, like fun to do. And we were giving up until you see this hotel uh, block. And on Google Maps is a club. And it's like, this is just like a hotel or something. And we get in and there's like a, a bounce of like, oh, 30 euros or whatever. We pay in, get in the elevator, we get up to the top floor. And like, I shit you not, it's like all Colombian people. And it's like some Colombian rave. And they're playing like Colombian dance music. And the whole like top floor of this hotel is popping off. What the heck? See, that's the... They're like, I think they're the places that are like, yeah, you find like some random spot, to. yeah. Just like, I don't know, just go, go to a, everyone listening to this podcast right now, like, book a flight to a random country and just try and find a weird club. That's your challenge for the I next think, year. I, do you know what? I've been wanting to do it, like, well, I've already done it in Dan, but I've always wanted to do it in like, I don't really class it in like Spain and stuff, really, yeah, yeah. Barcelona, I've done it, but I don't really class like, I'm talking the place like Germany and I don't know. Finland, I don't know. yeah, places just random like that. Like, yeah. I don't know, fucking anywhere, but like uh, Mexico, for instance. I was fucking fuck off all in Mexico. I don't know, but it is funny, like those type of places to go to. I love techno though. I'm get, like I'm really into my techno, man. Nah, techno but music. That's fair, bro. Nah, I love dance music. Like I'm trying to incorporate more of that into my music. Like I got like some hard style shit, techno shit coming of screams on it. And... Oh, that'd be cool. That will. Yeah, I just like dancing. To be honest, that's like my main thing. I like yeah. being loud and dancing. <laughs> I I I like I remember the last show that when I saw you, I forgot how tall you were, bro. I'm not gonna lie, I yeah. I forgot how tall you were. Ma- uh, dude, Mash is chatting absolute shit. I'm actually like five nine. He's not. He's not. I'm five nine. You, there's no way you're five <laughs> nine. Yeah, it's true. I'm five ten. You're taller than me. Don't know. He's like, chatting it, shit, guys. It, 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 might, it might just be the the ground, you know, like where we're. I don't know if you're winding me up. <laughs> No, I'm serious, yeah. Five nine. No, because even Marshall said I ain't listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> to be oh, fair, no. uh, jokes, jokes aside, I got no idea how tall people are. Like someone who's like five foot three and five foot seven are the same to me. Unless they're taller than me, like much taller, much shorter. I don't really. I can't. Are you that. five foot nine? Are you, honestly, are you... uh, I'm six six. There we go. Oh, fuck, there you go. <laughs> I knew it. How do you go from six six to five? <laughs> I crouch in it. Yeah. yeah, so what I'm trying to say was, guys, Cloud's fucking tall, man. So, 5'9 bollocks. Yeah. <laughs> fucking fuck oh. funny. Yeah. Oh, mate. What was your plans for your music anyway? Like, so you've, done, you've released the EP. Yeah. It fucking goes hard, man. I was listening to it. Which and you played it at the show anyway. Yeah. Um, are you working on an album? Can you say yes or no? I don't know. It's up to you if you want to not yeah. not a full album but i've i've got like a bunch of songs that all go hard but they, they don't really fit together as an album that i'm going to drop so i'm not sure what i'm going to do with it if like if i should split into two eps or just release out of singles or would you work in yeah. an album though no definitely or at some point recently yeah at some point i guess yeah it's something I'm, like i just like albums you know like i'm a fucking hipster dude like i got a bunch of cds over there like i i that's all i listen to i don't listen to spotify that much do you know what you need to do so you need to put your stuff on tapes that'd be cool that yeah now nah, i was working that um you yeah, know was like some deal in birmingham i was talking to you about making the latest ep graveyard drillings on tape because oh, i thought that was cool too. yeah 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 i'm definitely trying to sort some of that it's like some physical that'd shit. be a vibe mm. people are jumping on that at the minute because everyone's going back to like old school you know, 90s days and stuff like that and 80s and stuff. And I think it's a vibe, man. I love it. It is a vibe. It's also like, you don't get a lot of the bullshit. Like, 
Oh, the only console I own is a PS2. And I just, like, it's just good games with, without any, of like, downloading shit or, like, having to update. It's like, nah, I'll just put the game in. I've, I've vibed something sick and... I wanna, yeah. I'm tempted to buy another PlayStation 2, to be fair. Like, they are I'm, cool. I've only got an Xbox One, and I'm tempted to get yeah. one. How much do they go for now, do you think? It depends where you go, but they're not that expensive, like 30, 40 quid. Like. And then your games on top of that, like, a quid, two quid. Yeah, like from, C- <laughs> from CEX. You could buy, like, 60 games for 60 quid. <laughs> yeah, yeah have a much better experience than the new shit. Yeah, what's, I need to do it. What's your go-to PS2 game? What's your favourite? Um, do you know what, bro? I'm not gonna lie. I really enjoyed playing like the Medal of Honors. Dude, nah, their vibe like a fucking what's the one? Is it like Airborne? The fucking the one before Airborne, I think it was Medal oh, of Honor. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Fuck, nah, it's always it's. I can't remember, but like, yeah, they were no, a vibe. They were cool. Yeah. And um, I loved playing the old Lord of the Rings games, like the Re- uh, Return of the King and stuff. Yeah, dude, the fucking Two Towers one. And That's that the one. reason I want to buy a PlayStation 2 again, just to play that. Because they're, cool. they're not making like a full Lord of the Rings game, and it's pissing me off. The no, f- they're, they're going to make like some MMO shit, and like... They, That's they, what they I mean, and they have them. It's annoying. Yeah. Imagine the graphics and everything, the storyline they can make off it now. Like, there's Shadows of Mordor, don't get me wrong. It worked, but it wasn't the same, man. It wasn't the same. Nah, yeah, like the gameplay was hard, but like the story was kind of eh. yeah, it was a bit dead, wasn't it? But yeah. yeah, I just want to go back to old school stuff like that. Really, um, I enjoy it more, and I think it's just nice to hit, go back in time a bit. Yeah. San Andreas, I used to play San Andreas on the original Xbox, and God, that was. Then when I put, when I downloaded it on my Xbox One, I was playing San Andreas. Like this ain't the same, man. This is shit. Nah, you gotta have the you gotta have the originals. Like, you have to have the experience around it, like yeah. When you're playing some shit, if you play it on like a PS2 game on a big flat screen in HD, now it's gonna look like shit. You want like a crappy CRT monitor. You want a br- broken PlayStation that barely works, that you're propping up with like a book or something, and then just yeah. you know recreate the the time period sort of. Have you got the old TVs, or have you got a flat screen? I've got a. It's an old TV. It's not a CRT because like for some reason those are marked up to shit because everyone's a hipster now. Everyone's wants the old. Yeah, technology. mate. Have you seen how much they go for now? Dude, no, honestly, like you go on eBay and it's like, oh, gaming CRT TV, 200 quid, please. It's like... Mate, the more the monitors. It's crazy. Yeah. It is mental. Mm. It's like, oh, I've been trying to get hold of a camcorder, like a proper like old school camcorder. I can... Cannot get hold of one. Don't know where to get, get one from. Oh, yeah, bro, that's fucking... That's, that's a hard one, because like, it's all so in, marked up in price. Is it the aesthetic? I'm probably best going into a place like... Um, so you know when you get like places like like not CEX but like like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, what you should do, you should go to like I don't know, go to Eastern Europe, go to like East Poland or some shit, and go to like an electronics recycling thing. You'll get like a good camera from the nineties for like twenty p. It'd be fine. It'd be fire. Yeah, I haven't really thought that. That's not actually a good, not a bad idea. All right, so here's the plan. I'll, I'll book a show in East Poland in like some shitty city like Białystok. We yeah. all come down. Uh, and uh, you get your camera. Right, it would be cheap as anything anyway, so yeah. I'd be down for that. Be absolutely mental though, that would. Yeah, I was, I've been looking at getting some uh, shows done in Poland, like linking up with people there. That would be mm. cool, you know. Mm. Yeah. Thing is like, with UK alternative rap, it's like, it's all sort of in, it's not like a one big scene, it's like all little scenes divided together. And I don't know, with trap metal, it was like, if people make too much money, it's sort of like they sort of get, do their own thing, which is fine. But like, I just I like the collaboration spirit of it. Like, I, I'm not opposed to people making money. That it was just like, there's like some energy in different countries, like America or, G- or maybe even like, yeah, I'm not sure if Germany. I'm, I'm chatting last about Germany, but America definitely. They got like so much shit going on, so much like spirit and yeah. Yeah, no, I I, I understand what you're trying to say there. To be honest, because. Um... I think the alt scene at the minute is a bit. People vibe with it and then they don't at the same time. If that makes sense, like people yeah. like, I don't, I don't know. Like it, it was a thing, a big thing before, and it's died off a bit. But then you've still got it running in a lot of different places. Um, mm. But I don't know, man. Yeah. Also, everyone's like come into it from a, like, a different background. Like some people were like big into like rap. Some people were like metal or dance music or whatever beforehand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like. There's all these like different cultures, which is cool. Like it gets a lot of um, 
get a lot of unique art from it. But when it comes to something like playing shows or like organizing festivals or getting promoters up, it's like, I think like metal, hardcore and punk, like those scenes are like the best at getting communities together and getting shows put on. So like when you see people coming from like a rap background, they will try and make the show 100% about making profit, which it's fine again to like make money from a show, but it's like, no, no, just like something about like the punk and hardcore dudes. They know how to like have the right, like get the crowd in, get everyone involved. Get yeah, everyone yeah, it's in. more about how the crowd are going to react and putting on a good show rather than just making stuff off it. Yeah, Makes yeah. Sense. And I think this goes back to, I'm not saying anything on the podcast. So I don't want people to know, but oh. what we were talking about the recent last few days um, and what I've spoke to other people about, that's exactly what I want to do yeah. with that. So, um, wink, wink. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's gonna... <laughs> lonely globe promotion. It will come Soft out. Launch. It, will, it will come at some point. It will come out at some point. <laughs> but, yeah, like that. That's what the plan is. But then again, like I said, like like you said, sorry. It's 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 who. I think it would depend on the person as well. No, for sure. Like ah. I've got, I've had so many people contact me about like they want to jump on, um, doing shows and stuff, and they just not really into the point of making profit or anything as of yet i think mm -hmm. they just want to put on a show just to have the experience of it and have the experience give the experience to the listeners as well i think it's the best play best way to be no for sure it's like i don't know like i've been really spoiled with shows like every time i played one there's, there's always been someone moshing someone like singing along like i've never had a show where no one turned up i'm like eternally grateful for that yeah and, i don't know it's just I'm I'm very also thankful for the people I got to play with. I don't know. I'm just getting really like sappy. You now, really but... engage though. You do like when you watching you. You do engage so much with the audience and get them going like you do. But again, I've noticed that when I've, I've seen you twice and I've noticed that. No thanks, bro. Yeah, I don't know. I just uh, I don't really like being a, a, a rock star. Like, I I know the scene needs some rock stars. Like you know. We can leave the rock star shit to like Lossy, uh, Lossy, R Lawless and Rossi. Yeah. They, they can do the rock star stuff. I just want to be a dude, you know? I want to be like, I'm not into like merch signings or whatever. Like if someone wants to say hi to me, just say hi. It's like, it's not a big, I want to like be like enjoying the show of the crowd as well. That's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I get that. Yeah, it is a case of um, everyone's got their own like different way. Like I find as soon as you start really thinking about profit and stuff into it i think it becomes less of the enjoy less of an enjoyment and you've got your mind focused on focused on one thing more than the main thing it should have been it's why they say about when you create music it's best to create what you want to create and not create what the listener wants to hear because then the fun goes out of it altogether yeah um, for sure. but that's that's i think that's the same with the podcast like i know people want certain things i've got so many people going oh can you get some grime artists on i won't do grime it's not going to happen I don't want to. Inter I don't want to put that into my podcast. It's not. I'm not going to allow it. It's not yeah. what I want to do. Yeah, I'm. Not, I'm never going to do it. But, no, yeah. I mean, what's what's the uh, what's the issue of grime? Not that I'm criticizing. Just wondering. It's just um, the niche I want to stay within. The more underground scene. Oh, nah, fair. The alternative, the metal, all that type of stuff. Like I'm up for um, interviewing bands and stuff because you know. Mm -hmm. I, I class it as the like your metal. Like, I really want to start interviewing a lot of shoegaze type uh, style people, um, so bands and uh, artists, solo artists uh, who kind of run into the shoegaze type per scene. But um, yeah, we've I said this to Marshall. Like um, the best way to explain it is like I know how music impacts a lot of people and it impacts the artist or the band itself. Um, like now we've like you got a lot of emo rap which to some certain extent is a lot a lot about heartbreak and heartache yeah. and you know like how self-harm and stuff like that like and it is behind behind that yeah that, that is part of the genre i should say um i wouldn't say altogether but and if they want to like talk about that because that's what's going on in their life I, I, you know what there's nothing wrong with that um but i'll always draw it back to there's a listener and then there's the listener so you've got your listeners that just listen to the music, um, which are like, you know, like I want to, this best best way to be, like people want to be like peep. Um, I'm going to do loads of drugs. I'm going to like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to like, you know, basically make, 
just my life's going to be feel, feel a bit shitty and life's not going good for them. Do you know all that type of stuff? Yeah. But yeah. then you've got the listener and uh, the listener, your fans, where they will listen and go, oh, he's hurting. Like, but it, he's, he's, he's showing that in his music, but we know he's hurting. They're not going out of their way to try and be something they shouldn't be. So on the lead to grime, um, you get your mainstream artists. I'm a big fan of Bugs and Malone, all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Like, guy's amazing. I've seen him live. Absolutely unreal. Stormzy, again, all those two people, brilliant artists. But that's, again, you draw the listener to the listeners. Now you've got drill, grime and drill, yeah. where a lot of, it, lot of it's about knife crime, gun crime, you know, drugs and stuff like that. And I find, like, you get all that underground grime scene. I can't tell... You tell me one listener that doesn't listen to that and that's and that's not doing that. Like, on that type of ball... Like, on that type of game, doing those things. It just gives off a bad image. Nah, fair. Like, yeah, there's definitely a lot of, like, kids that get, get into it and, like, get the wrong impression. And... It's just the background after it. It's the... Oh... I knew I shouldn't have gone into that or someone, something's happened to someone. I knew yeah, that yeah. shouldn't have happened. You knew that from the start. You, it's just, you saw it as star signs. You see these people as people to look up to and they're not people to look up to. No, for sure. But like, I don't know, as humans, we do like, like that dark side of shit. Like, well, back in the 90s and whatever, like with bands in like Norway and oh, shit, God, killing yeah. each other. And I was like, oh my God, they're satanic murderers and the that dude. And then like, it's a sort of same appeal, but on a mass scale. Because like back in the 90s, you know, we had one person stab someone. And that's big news. In the drill, it's every, every week for it. Every, yeah, every yeah, week, yeah. Yeah, literally. But again, like I said, like it's just, I've got, I've, I've got friends that listen to it and that try and get, not, uh, I wouldn't say get into that type of thing. Like they listen to the music and they are friends with people that listen to that music and people that do the music. And it's just, I never hear good things. Hmm. So it's like, I don't really want to put something I'm working hard for into something like that. Because at the same time, anything I say, I could piss the wrong person off and that cause impact on my podcast or whatever. Hmm. Something I'm trying to build. And it's always, there's always something. With, with that type of genre, there's always like someone going after someone, someone against someone. And it's just, it's tit for tat. So I'd rather keep myself in the genre, uh, the underground scene where the whole point behind Lonely Globe was for people that, uh, artists out there, solo artists or bands that are trying to make a, a name for themselves. Um, but it's uh, a point in a way to get people in the world who are lonely and, you know, want to find Globe. those people to connect with and it's a community I want people to connect and I want people to come together hence why I want to do what I want to do within the next few months or so yeah so it makes sense really it's, uh, a, yeah. it's a strange one really man but that is the whole purpose for grime like that's why I won't do it yeah I mean there's a lot of grime influence stuff I really like like I oh think, yeah don't get wrong there's, there's, there's loads uh, yeah dude like even in the I think it's difficult. There's a few bands that try to do like heavy music and grime. Like I think, what was that band? They were called like Asteroid Boys. They were from like Wales or something, and they were doing like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, they were doing they were doing some shit like that. But I didn't really uh, fuck with that. Then like this band called Gassed Up came along, and they were doing like grime. But like honestly, the instrumentals were kind of hard. But the lyrics were just way too cringe for me, man. Like, I I, I appreciate where they were coming from. Like they had a song about being against knife crime and they were like yeah a man's not right if he's holding a knife and it just I don't know yeah. cracks me up <laughs> it's a bit cheesy but I like um, Ironed Out from London they're fucking hard as nails bro it's, it's there's only like, there's only I'd say two people I respect that went not into the grime scene but entered into like a drill scene oh, yeah. and it worked really well mm. it's Kilmore and Cinzy oh, yeah. hands down when they did uh, drill metal mm. and Kilmore for one like <sighs> His music, it was drill metal, and it was it was hard, man. I I actually can sit there and say that was good, and and I'm I don't really like that like drill type music, and it depends on the drill actually. I like American drill music. I'm not a big fan yeah. of UK drill, but um, yeah, it's, uh, that was that was something else, man. And I like yeah. that certain style because it's metal though. I like metal music. Mm -hmm. No respect, respect. I think that's yeah. why I like trap metal. That's why I like your music because it is. Heavy hitting A O eights, screaming over the top of it. Like it's just it's impacting. And I like that type of thing, man. It's impact. Yeah, no, nah, just 
energy, bro. It was like when this shit first started popping off with like bones and X and that sort of shit. I was mm. still trying to make like heavier, like like heavy band music. I was trying to get like death metal and like beat down bands. And then like no one's to play with me because like everyone wants to do some softer shit. And then like I saw Bones screaming on stage, getting the crowd going. I was like, damn, okay. I don't, I don't need anyone to do this, bro. I can do it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Bones is hard, man. But no, honestly, bro, big inspiration. Like, he, yeah, he was supposed to come to UK before like pandemic. But then, oh like, shit! I was supposed to go to that show, and he never happened. Nah, yeah, never. I don't think even think he's like. No, he's, I think mm -hmm. he's doing like Memphis and everything now. He's doing a US tour yeah. instead with um, uh, Xavier Wolf. Uh, there's quite a few of them. Mm. Yeah, that'd be crazy. That was I was really looking forward to that because I was going to get the tickets, but obviously because the pandemic, it never happened. I was good, man. Mm. But he he's got a, a distinctive voice, like you know when you hear Bones, and nah, there's sure. no one got a voice like him. No, like a lot of people try doing the same shit like he does, but you can't you can't sound like him. OG Bones, Dead go. Boy, and fucking Sodium. What else? was Yeah, that? and then like on what's that? Dirt. Yeah, no. What's that uh, mixtape where he's like squatting in the supermarket on the cover? And it's, is that the one? Like, is oh, it? Sh oh, I gotta look at this one now. Hold on. It was. Because his new stuff's been decent, right? Yeah, yeah. Was it, wasn't it called like Cracker or something? I don't even know. Or did he have a song called Cracker? I don't know. You've got... Um, so obviously, remember pay, Paid Programming was a big one. That was yeah. his... Ah, okay. Yeah, Cracker. Yeah, it's Cracker. 2013. That was... And yeah. He had White Witch. He did Bacteria, because Bacteria was a big one. Um, which one else did he do? There's quite a few on this one. The, uh, the the ones that I liked were like Bring Me to Life and uh, Marsh Pits. That was a cold one. Yeah, Marsh Pits. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I think my best, um, I think the best one he did was probably, I think Paid Programming was one of my favourites because that had a lot, of, um, a lot of stuff going on in it. Snow was a decent one. Uh, and then I think once you started hitting 2017 when he started releasing... Uh, no redeeming qualities when you had oxygen, shit like that. Oxygen just went off. Dude, I was caught. That's one of the first songs I heard. This is not going to be a Bones uh, fangirl podcast. No, it's me. not. <laughs> I'm but if I had to phone, if I had to phone girl over a fucking album, Bones did. Uh, from Beyond the Grave. Which one was that? Was that the? Uh... That was from Beyond the Grave. Was Ashes Two Stroke Equipped uh, Two Two Three. Uh, you got cement. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tombstone killer. Um, and then the one I've been vibing to like, massively recently is um, oh, which one was it now? I can't even remember which one it was. I was vibing to recently. I've been listening to it hard. F um, flashbacks of how you left me is a good one. That's on the uh, Forbidden Image um, EP. Or album, yeah, yeah. An album, yeah, yeah. That 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 was uh, I I started listening to Bones like, I think it was back in 2013 when I started venturing out into the underground type star stuff. Yeah, he's like a huge, huge gateway artist. Where I want to be like, was he your I gateway want, artist? Yeah, definitely. Like when I discovered his music, like it was like I think X was the first one. I was like, okay, there's got to be more people who do it. And then I, I went into like Bones, and I was like, okay, this is fucking cold. I think and, um, Peep and Youngling was mine. On that Youngling, definitely. It's like I didn't get into Peep until like a bit later. Until yeah, and there was like some girl I was trying to fuck, and then like she was really into Peep. So I, I, I listened to him, and I was like, okay, it's actually kind of hard. Yeah, yeah. Peep's cool, man. That is a surprising amount of stories. It's like, yo, I want to get with this girl, so I'm going to listen to the music, and it's actually hard. And then that's how I got into like, emo shit. And, yeah. yeah, it's a drawback, I think. Uh, he gives off that. He, again, like the one we were talking about earlier, like, he's, a, he's a person, like, he gets you into that. Do you know one thing I did like about Peep, actually? Yeah. He didn't, no matter who you were, he put it right that don't give a fuck about anything, do what you want to do. Mm. Yeah, honestly, he was like, yeah. Young Kobe. He didn't give a fuck. Mm. And I like that style. I think that's uh, he's like people like him that, that were influencers are the reason why we do, a lot of us do what we do now though because I wouldn't be able to do this a couple of years back because I wouldn't have had the balls to do it and I cared what people thought but like talking about it now like when I've started doing like music and my, my own 
I've just got to the point where I don't give a shit what people think. I'm just going to do it. Nah, for sure. It's like, and it's like, you, it'll feel cringe, but it's got to have to feel cringe or else it's not good. You know what I mean? It's like, I think my name, like at first I thought it was kind of cringe, but you just can't grow into it. And I always just I'm think the, about mainstream artists where they started somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. But also, like, I think if you overanalyze anything by yourself, you'll just see the flaws and like you just like to critique yourself too much. You just gotta yeah. keep pushing, keep making stuff, keep putting stuff out there. No, that is right. That's what my friend Vessel does a lot. He he's can't he does like doubt himself, and I'm like, stop doubting yourself, man. Like you've got fucking six thousand monthly listeners. Like this, that's six thousand people that listen to you. Just like, stop doubting yourself, Vessel, man. You go on doubt yourself. You're a handsome man. You're a handsome young man. He is a handsome young man. Yeah. He's bringing out some hard stuff, man. Hard stuff. Absolutely unreal stuff, man. Yeah. Honestly, I'd like I'm, to see. I like to see Vessel do a show. Yeah. Bring. Wait, where's he based? He's, in, he's UK, right? Yeah, he's UK. I don't actually know where about. In the, he lives in a little village, and then he has to like. He commutes a lot, so like he'll go to like London a lot and places okay. like that. Um, Right. But that's well, the thing. He was like the same boat as you. Like th there is nothing around him, like nothing, yeah. and it, it pisses him off. But like at the same time, I think you have to have a place like that to go. I need to step out. I need to step yeah. on the outside. So you got no choice to do it. So I think if like you're in someone's shoes, like you yourself were, you, you do. You just think I've got to step outside because what the fuck am I going to do if not? I'm going to be stuck in one 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 place. Nah. Yeah, but. Then again, like I'd love to see Vessel do a show in like some shitty village hall. I'll play that. I don't care. This is not genuine. I think offer. we can make it happen. I think we should yeah. just go down to this show and just yeah. all make it happen personally. No, nah. yeah. What's well, like? I do want to play more shitty towns. Like, because again, as a kid, no shows going on. So you'd go to like, I have to go to like Leamington Spa. And, like, there'd be a show there once. There might be something on in Coventry. Might be yeah. something. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just want to like. Just for like, if there's like one kid out there like me who wants to like go to some heavy shows but has got nowhere to go to, I want to play like his shitty like town. And... Have you got one in mind that you'd like to like really do like a show somewhere? Dude, when it came to like shitty towns, Ke Ketrin, that was in that was an insane show. Like, um, where's that? Where, where's that one? That is like east. Is it southeast of Leicester? Yeah, it's like East Midlands. Okay. That and was hard it, though. That went off. That yeah, bro. Some dude bought a bin into the fucking, no way <laughs> yeah he bought a bin and like, he, got, he got smashed within like uh five songs like it was completely torn no to way because yeah because when i was doing the ball game right i threw the ball and he tried to like uh, catch the ball in the bin to yeah. stick it, which is a smart idea but it was a plastic bin so everyone threw themselves at him bin got shattered and, oh yeah, mate was, yeah. we need to do one we need to do one in those uh underground type places like proper old school underground where the underground music will be played i think we need to find a place that's that's the thing i'm not going to look out for like anything that's closing down like a shitty restaurant or something and be like yo but dude, let's play let's play in nando's or something how sick would that be yeah dude if there's a, if there's a manager at nando's watching hit me up we'll do a show at nando's any places that are closing down recently you just think fuck it come and do something let us know yeah because yeah. that will work hard man that'll be like highlighted for the underground yeah those nah. are the places you want to do, though. Yeah, I know, like, when the Binley Mega Chippy meme was popping off, like, a bunch of, like, people I knew, they were trying to, like, put on a show in Binley Mega Chippy. But, like, it, it fell through because of some health and safety shit, I think. But, we need to do yeah. a garden one. A garden one? Garden stage, yeah. Garden stage. And then just absolutely yeah. go ham. But I think that's more the states where the people have got the big houses. Yeah, yeah. got big big houses. They've got a space to get, like, a huge PA and shit. Like, set it off like some Project X shit. Yeah, dude. Uh, fuck. Yeah, I know Cyber. He did a a, a garden show a few to, like, once or twice. But yeah, did it's probably it? DIY. Yeah. No way. Yeah, he's doing like a garden show in New York and that. I bet that was sick. Nah, yeah, I'd love that. Birmingham garden show. If you got a garden in Birmingham, hit me up or <sighs> Bristol. That you just, yeah, that's just gonna, that's pretty much not in the middle of nowhere, but that's just gonna keep everything on the low and. Yeah, yeah. There's gonna be no calls. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, dude, like my mates in the band Bite Wound, they did a show in a warehouse recently and that was that was that popped off. But like even then the police came. Yeah. And was like, that just a random warehouse? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I I couldn't go to that one because it was like it was Got close it. to Christmas and Yeah. It's like the class it's like what is these classes trespassing, isn't it? On those on that property. I guess if you so. can get away with it, it's you're buzzing, but if you can't yeah. you it's one of them, isn't it? Yeah. 
Oh well, I guess like I need to infiltrate like more small warehouses, like, get a job there, and then like become a manager. Let a show happen there. Oh That's my. the trap. That's my that's my plan. But yeah. Just get a yeah. I think we just need to all invest into a warehouse. Do, do like what we need to do. Invest into a warehouse and do it look like. Uh, remember, um, oh, final uh, was it um, Fantasy Factory with uh, Rob Deerdeck? I've no idea. no no. No, don't remember that. Right, Fantasy Factory. Man. I don't remember that. It was Rob Deer. Do Rob Deerdeck the skateboarder? Maybe. He, he was like a big time skateboarder back in the day, like like with Tony Hawk and stuff and all that type of uh, those type of people. And he had a show called Fancy Factory, and he had this huge factory uh, with a skate park in it, and he had his own office. He had like a chair made out of all skateboards, like he had dog skateboard and everything. And um, they would just do challenges throughout the day. So like on a day-to-day basis, they'll feed it because he had so much money, he'd just feed out a challenge. So there's like, we're gonna build the world's biggest skateboard and take it down New York. So that did stuff like that, um, and they went out and built like a skate park for like the community. Oh, that's sick. They would like build like a doom buggy that went so fast and they'd take it up the ramp in, in the like factory and everything. But it was just crazy stuff they used to do. And it, that was all just through a factory you just bought just to fuck about him basically run his business. Yeah. See, yeah, when I eventually make my, my millions, I'll get the factory. You know? Yeah. What would, you call, what would you call it? Uh, the clout the tree, the fuck. Yeah. Uh, the clout house. The clout, clout house is a good one. I'll, I'll take that. I'll steal it. The clout house. That was cool. Yeah. It's like maybe just the crack house in general. <laughs> no, it's but after yeah. twelve. After tw- yeah, yeah. Once all the kids go home. That, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't, that's kind of shit. I don't want. I don't want kids at my warehouse, bro. Nah, fuck that. I don't. I don't want to be like all these other <laughs> under- rappers. I was getting like, Adults I, I, only. Eight, well, we have ID on the door. I'd say I'd say, I'd say eighteen plus, but I think eighteen's like the new sixteen, so we're gonna say twenty one plus. Yeah, twenty one plus. Yeah. According to a lot of places, eighteen is the new sixteen, so yeah, twenty one plus it is. No, nah, honestly, it's like I'm age reveal, I'm twenty two, but like I I could not like I could not see myself with an eighteen year old. Not because like I think that'll be like too weird at our ages, but just like I don't know. Like, men- when I think about where I was mentally at, at eighteen, that is just like you were still a child, mate. Yeah, you really are, and you do. You think, oh, I'm eighteen now. I'm an adult. You don't honestly. No. Not until you look back and you go, like, I was eighteen what nine years ago. So I look back now and I, pff, it is crazy. I think I wasn't even an adult. I really wasn't. Mm. But fuck it. Like I had some good times when I was eighteen. I think I had better times when I was sixteen though. Oh, you know, in honesty, I already did. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, I, I did some like, mental shit. Like, it's sometimes st- ignorance is bliss. Like, when you're 16, you're, you're, you're a stupid kid. Oh, mate, you don't understand. When you look back and you think of the stuff you did, you do look yeah. back and go, why did I do that? Like, what was going through my head to do that? Because you look at it now and you go, you wouldn't dream about doing it. Mm. Nah, like, when I was 16, I went to a house party. You're absolutely shit-faced. And walked from Leamington to Coventry. And they're yeah. like, it was a three and a half hour walk. And I was like, fuck it, I'm done with this party, bro. Fuck but, all you but guys. That's, that's the vibe, innit? It's like, yeah. that's the vibe. But no, you wouldn't do it. You'd be like, no. I ain't walking that far. <laughs> like, I ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah, and not to mention, there was that like, fucking storm going on. So I'm like, just yeah. walking these country lanes in the storm. I'm like, bro, I, I don't know. Someone could have like, I could have died, bro. Probably not, but. Like, you, you, you would, when you were 16, you would like, I don't know about you, but like, you might mates be in a throwing party. You'd be like, oh, I'll be there. You get there at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. Like now, if my mates are going, oh, yeah, we, we'll probably be up to about two or three in the morning. Come 12 o'clock, I'm like, oh, there's no point because I'm going to bed in three hours, so I ain't even going to bother. Yeah. But back then, you just would. You just go and be like, if everyone's there, you're like a bit in bed, you just chill anyway. Yeah, you'd go out to like midnight and then like, and I stay up like really fucking late and then I get up for school at like 6 a.m. still. Yeah. I don't know. Dude, I fucking... After a house party, I slept on like a Coventry bench in sixth form and like a college and like, like, so I had like school the previous day, went out, got shit faced, couldn't make it home in time, slept on a bench and got up and went to school like normal. Is that <laughs> what, is that why we uh, suffer with the long lasting back problems now? Yeah, yeah that, I think that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, man, like, it's been crazy man, when you think back about all the things we used to do and. I do miss it. I'd do anything to go back in time. Mm. I really would. Would I do things differently? Well, a lot of things, yeah, I would have done differently. But then there's things I'd have done better and things I wouldn't have changed. 
But. Yeah. Well, at that age, like 16, 17, I wasn't a big fan of like breaking the rules, but I always liked pushing them. Like, I'd just like, I don't know, what, what's some dumb shit I did? Like, this one time, I, you know, Tiananmen Square? I was probably, because we get the video banned in China, but it's like, it was, um, it was oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, yeah, it's like this uh, massacre that covered up by the Chinese government. And for whatever reason, me and my friends, we decided to print off like 50 photos of that street, like with no tanks, no people, just the street to every school printer. And like, no one figured out who it was. And then, like, another time, I just like, I typed into my computer in, on like someone else's account like pregnancy quiz and then like some teacher walked in thinking I was like a teenage girl who just got pregnant and like, <laughs> I had to act like I didn't do anything and I don't know just I always I miss doing stupid shit like that and it's like yeah the, the stuff at school was the funniest yeah and just, I don't know you can get away with like being more stupid because like when you know you know necro trap yeah like when all these kids are like making songs about oh yeah I'm a terrorist and I'm gonna join like, Al Qaeda like you kind of have to give them a pass because they're all like 15, 16. But if me as like a, a, like someone that, a, basically ancient in comparison is like getting to talk about yeah I'm gonna be a terrorist and I'm join yeah Al-Qaeda. from like now on to the age of thirty if you were seeing like rapping about yeah. stuff like that it just yeah it's not going yeah but then there's a parabola because like, if you're sixteen and you're rapping about joining ISIS like that's kind of hard <laughs> yeah there is that as well actually I don't I don't know, it's like yeah it's like that. Like with emo rap, you know, you're like, it's like probably like eight, you're, you're cool at like 18, 19 or whatever, but as you get older, it goes down. But then you're like, when you become like a 70 year old emo rapper, that's cool as shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense actually. Yeah. I'm so trying I'm, I'm trying I'm, to think of uh, if Lawless and uh, Rossi be rising mega at the age of 60 there, do they? That'd be cool. That'd be funny as hell. I hope they do. I hope, like, if they have to take a hiatus for, like, 30 years, be it. But, like, yeah. come, come back at, like, 60, 70. <laughs> and be, like, little peep emo rap style 2017. And <laughs> exactly how it was. No changes. Crazy stuff, man. Yeah. Still rapping about Xanax and, like, high school high br- heartbreaks and that. Whilst on the Xanax. <laughs> yeah. and, and still worrying, still missing that heart, uh, that high school sweetheart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 40 years, bro. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Lonely Globe, ladies and gentlemen, it's been Cloud Cider. <laughs> bro, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. It's been nah. a blessing. Thank you really so much for having me on, bro. Like, I've, again, it's been we... a long time. To, I mean, it's been a while. I've been trying to get you on, and oh God, I have took the piss. I haven't been very well, like properly. So I've finally got you on. I'm glad. Uh, and the best thing is, there's always more to come. There is. There's loads more to come, man. So. Yeah, for sure. Like I, I loved it, man. I, I, lo- I love the show, and like we went on some mad tangents there. But like, yeah, yeah, but it's best, 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 best thing. People like to listen to mad, mad stuff, man. Yeah. Anything you want to say to your listeners? I want to say like, if if you into like underground crap shit, get involved. You don't even have to. Making music is piss easy. Steal a beat from YouTube and rap over it. But like, take photos, book shows, like get involved somehow it's you you make lots of friends it'll be a fucking blast best thing you ever do i guarantee all yeah. your money back i agree man i agree on that i absolutely agree yeah thanks very much man this has been lonely globe 